I'm playing with some old stuff again. Um, here I have a microprocessor computer trainer CT65 from the German company Thaler, uh, which uh, amazingly still exists, and Mr. Thaler himself. Um, sent me a copy of this uh, user guide here and before we start playing with that let's have a look at the guide here. As you can see it's from April 1982 so it's quite old and CT65 is because it uses the 6502 microprocessor that's the same microprocessor as used in the Apple One, in the Apple Two, and uh, a lot of other famous computers of that time. And as you can see, everything is written on a typewriter. All the drawings are drawn by hand, not that computer rubbish we know today. Um, it has, of course, there is an explanation of all the function keys it has. Go key, save key, load key. Yes, it has the possibility to save and record data on a, on a cassette player. It has an input and an output for that. There are some index keys with special functions like a a real-time clock that can be used in the programs, error messages, and of course some schematic diagrams. That's the, the part with the display that explains uh, what codes every key uh, generates when it is pressed. So, for example, you have row 1, uh, code 1, 2, 4, 8, that's binary, 1, 2, 4, 8, that's for the 4 bits. It repre represents here for of the port A of the microprocessor. So, 4 bits are input from the keys, 4 bits are output, scanning the keys and also scanning the display and display data goes in here and that's the rest of the here we have a little bit of this cassette interface the recorder circuit it has an input it has an output uh, the workings are it works relatively simple it generates two tones a high tone for a zero and a low tone for a for a one i think and then let me see there is somewhere is a little bit about that if i find it here it is the recorder format um, it is 1200 Hz for a logical 0 and 2400 Hz for a logical 1. And then we have a program name that is stored with the program, a start address. Uh, somewhere must be an end address. No, I think that is de determined by the number of blocks. Uh, start address and check the checksum, of course, yes, for to check if everything is recorded correctly. Uh, there is some the memory table, the useful kind uh, part of the RAM is from address 0200 up to 03FF. That's the user RAM, then we have some reserved space for uh, additional boards and the monitor program, that's monitor is the piece of software in the ROM, so on a PC we would call it the BIOS, it makes it possible to enter data 
and display data because if you just power on the processor it does absolutely nothing everything has to be programmed yeah that's the manual it's not really big 22 some 30 pages but well let's play with the board and in fact i'm quite happy that I'm able to show you this board in working conditions because just before I started my camera this power supply here decided to go boom and it literally did because this is my interface cord where power supply is connected power switch goes in here I left it disconnected here on the side and suddenly uh, Tantalum capacitor I soldered in here exploded with a lot of smoke I had to open the windows first and uh, yeah uh, fortunately I unplugged that and nothing happened to the board but unfortunately it was just in front of my power supply and all the exploding tantalum capacitor stuff spread on my display and almost only on my display a little bit here on the side but yeah i hope i can clean that but yeah it doesn't look very nice so be careful with old power supplies i mean especially that one here uh, so to be sure you better take a new one if you want to power up something valuable as this board here maybe it would also be a good idea to add a saner diode as a over voltage protection to interfaces like that so, okay let's plug that in that's a universal connector uh, pin uh, description is in the manual I added a couple of LEDs here to just to have some blinking LEDs there's uh, power 8 to 12 volt it is in, stated in the manual although I wouldn't go higher than 10 volt because this is a 5 volt voltage regulator and it already gets quite hot with 9 volt I don't know 12 volt is probably a little bit much for that guy okay then I have a new power supply here connect that here and we can turn it on so at the moment it shows us some random data I press the reset button it tells us 6502 and jumps to the starting address 0200 with nothing in the uh, memory of course we can go further by pressing the enter key and you see it's always zero okay so let's see some of the special features I don't want to talk uh, in detail about the programming of the microprocessor there are other videos a lot of books about that I just want to see what's special about this specific board here and for example we can choose index that's the I key index uh, F it tells us U mean UR means clock in German and I type in the actual time it is now 1538 and you see the clock is running right now um, it can be hidden by for example pushing the reset key now the clock is running in the background and we can use that data for our own programs for example uh, in the address zero zero 
a 9 we have the hours 15 hours on address 00 AA we have the 38 minutes and that address 00 a B we have the seconds which are still counting right now so if you want to use that in a program you only have to call address 0 a 9 to 0 a B and you have the hours minutes and seconds you can use that for your whatever program that's quite handy okay reset so clock is still working uh, there is only one thing that does doesn't work with index 3 I should recall that clock but it doesn't work for some reason maybe I have a different version of software or whatever okay another feature is and that's the reason why I have these two change connectors here one for input output one for input you can connect the tape recorder or any old, uh, analog audio recorder to this machine you can save programs in form of an audio format as I explained before uh, a low tone for the zeros a high tone for the once and that stream of data can be recorded on any audio recording equipment and then you can play it back read it in new program is back unfortunately that doesn't work either uh, what works is the uh, save function so i say save it asks me for the end address so all programs are, are starting at zero uh, at zero two zero zero so I say my end address is 02FF then it wants a file name FI file name I say 0001 and it says Aufn, Aufnahme record that means press the record on a button on your device and when you're ready, you're recording, you press enter, and now it spits out the data to the tape, to the audio port here. It's done. And I can show you how that sounds like. I'm using the record, the audio record function of QuickTime Player here on my Mac. That's very easy. I have a uh, a Mac Mini that has a audio input and output uh, connector on the back side and it's quite simple to use so I recorded one of these uh, program uh, recordings and it sounds like that Yeah, that's it. It has an interesting beat. It sounds a little bit like the girl from Ipanema, if you know that song. And so on. Okay. And last but not least, I will type in a small program so you can see how that works. It's just a, a little program that counts in a hexadecimal code on two uh, displays. It counts from 00, 0 to FF and goes ahead and ahead. Uh, interesting, there is a, a, a subroutine called DISP-C, meaning display the system values, whatever. Um, and there is an other subroutine which is a time delay uh, loop 
it is called T01S, meaning uh, time 0 0.1 seconds. And the accumulator of the CPU is loaded with O3. That O3 is then passed to this subroutine, so we will have a delay of 0 0.3 seconds until the count continues. Increment A1, that's address A1, which is used for the display. Uh, each display has a, a special address in this monitor program. So this has not much to do with the 6502 programming. It's more like using subroutines that are implemented in, the, in this monitor software. But uh, for example, a jump command is just what you expect from the 6502. Uh, let's hack that in and see if it works. Okay, reset. We are on 200. And just in case, if you wondered how you correct stuff, if you typed something wrong, so for example, if I tapped in AA, but it should be O2, I just continue writing until O2 is displayed here. Then I press the Enter button and that is now in the memory. OK, reset, go. And now you see it counts with 0.3 seconds delay up to F. F. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.